everybody's got a mixed bag of genetics. I don't think I've got good genetics. I don't think I've got bad genetics. I've got my genetics. Warning. You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. So this is going to be a little mini rant. I'm really sick of people rationalizing their inadequacy and failures as bad genetics. You see this all the time. People say bodybuilding is mostly genetics. That's because they aren't very good bodybuilders. And they their rationalization for why they're not a good bodybuilder is that they didn't have the genetics for it, rather than they're not hardworking and or they're not disciplined and or they're not smart enough to have a good plan. You see this a lot. And it's like if you were a real man, you would just try anyway. And even if you were fighting an uphill battle, you would still try and there's a good chance you might succeed. There's lots of people with bad genetics who manage to accomplish a lot of things. Like Forrest Gump is an R word. Our Forrest Gump had an amazing life because he didn't know he was an R word, so he applied himself anyway. So there's like a plethora of different genetics. There's genetic for bone structure. If you have short femurs, you'll, you can have big legs. If you have a short torso, you can have big lats. If you have, there's genetics for tendon length versus muscle belly length. Like if you have um, the, the people say, I don't have the bicep genetics for a peak, but that means you have the bicep genetics to have really big arms. It's just gonna take you longer. People say, I'm genetically cursed because I'm tall, so I'll never look big on stage. That's not true. If you put on an extra 100 pounds of muscle over a short guy, you'll look really big on stage, and then no short guy would be able to beat you. So there's advantages and disadvantages to every genetic situation. Someone says, I don't have the genes to get shredded. It's like, that means you have the genes to grow muscle really easy. And it's like someone says, I don't have the genes to grow muscle. Well, it's like, then you have the genes to get shredded really easy. That genes are, and then there's three, according to Kurt, there's 300 different genes that determine body fat. So that means, do you really think that you've got the, the two thumbs down and all 300 of them? The statistical probability, I think, would be like two to the 300th power to be genetically shit in all 300 of those genes. The bottom line is, what you do need is one gene, and that's the gene to try. So if discipline is genetic, which of course these genetic people say discipline is genetic, yeah, they basically obviate any free will. And saying it's genetics is basically saying God's will. It's just like, I'm not responsible for what happens to me. I'm not responsible for my fate. It's God's will. I'm not responsible that I shot up a school. It's my mommy and daddy didn't raise me right. It's the same bullshit as these genetic people. Is they're just weak people that don't want to take responsibility for their failures. It's like, if you were really a man, you would try and you'd take it to the limit and see how far you got. And you would have an assessment like, I have genetically high lats. I have genetically short biceps. I have, gene I have long tendons in all of the things that matter, like quads, lats, biceps, delts. So I have high insertions on like every muscle. I also have short femurs and short um, tibias, short humeruses, so I have the genetic advantage to have big muscles and the genetic advantage to have small muscles at the same time. So it's a mixed bag of genes. I'm genetically cursed for building muscle, but I'm genetically advantaged in that I can get lean relatively easily and get super shredded. Some people say like, oh, you're so much more shredded than anybody else, You, it must be genetic. It's like, or I try harder and you fucking suck. That's possible. And the same thing with um, the, uh, what's my other favorite one? Oh, like I'm a hypo responder. It's like I'm also a hyper tolerator. So it's like steroids don't do a whole lot in me, good or bad. It means I can take grams of the shit, blood works perfect. 
So people are like, oh, you're so lucky, you've got good jeans, you can get away with taking all this gear. It's like, yeah, but my jeans are bad in the sense that I would have to take two, three, four, five times as much gear to equivalent to you. That's why me telling people my cycle is dangerous because they're going to assume they can get away with it, where the people are taking 200 to 500 milligrams of test and they've got acne and tits and it's like, I'm on three and a half grams a year and I don't have any problems, but also my cycle is much more intelligently designed. I'm not some fucking sheep who does what everyone else does, and it's like, I'm just going to take a ton of test and primo so I can fit in and be cool because all the cool kids take primo. It's like, I'm actually smarter than that, and I actually do the blood work and figure out what are the effective doses for the right medication, and that in me, primo is an extremely strong AI, and it crushes my GF1 levels indirectly by crushing my estrogen. And if you don't understand what that means, you need a fucking coach who does because that's way too complicated for you and that that's the other thing is that there's a genetic element to a plethora of different things on the inside like your how well do your kidneys tolerate this drug and how well does your hair follicles tolerate that drug so I don't have good genes for hair and I both of my dads my dad and my grandfather were bald by the time they were 30 and I had pretty good hair up until I had this transplant surgery it hasn't grown back yet now but up for 44 I had way more hair than either my dad or my grandfather did and they sure as fuck didn't use steroids so steroids didn't make my hair fall out it was in fact, it was my anti-steroid hair care protocol that kept my hair for as long as it was around. And it's the same thing with the gyno thing. It's like, oh, you're prone to gyno. It's like, eh, that happened mostly because I took dutesteride to protect my hair. It wasn't, or it's like, it wasn't because... And the same thing goes in reverse. It's like the Masteron didn't cause the hair loss. The hair loss was there ever before I ever used Masteron. It was from using anti-estrogens. So my anti-estrogens caused the hair loss, and the dutesteride caused the gyno. It wasn't the actual gear. It was these ancillaries that a lot of guys just throw on top as a precaution, as a prophylactic agent. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the Director of Human Performance. This is the practice in which I practice medicine. Uh, we'll be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy as needed based upon the results of your blood work. Please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. Everybody's got a mixed bag of genetics. I don't think I've got good genetics. I don't think I've got bad genetics. I've got my genetics. My skin's amazing. You know, and that's the thing is, for being 45, I have no stretch marks, no wrinkles anywhere except for my face, which is, luckily, it's not a face competition, and not unless you're in men's physique or classic physique, but luckily, bodybuilding, you're expected to be ugly and bald, so it doesn't matter. You're just graded on your body because it's bodybuilding. It's not face building. So that's bottom line of it is I'm just so fucking sick of people saying, we can't listen to Ronnie Coleman because he had good genetics. We can't listen to Dorian Yates, he had good genetics. It's like Dorian Yates had the most scientific approach to bodybuilding the world had ever seen. And people who rely on stupid ass studies done on rats and obese women and diabetics, rather than using their own personal log books and blood work to determine their N equals one results is retarded. That the positive predictive value of studies is worthless. You can't take these studies and extrapolate what's gonna to happen to you. The only way for you to get positive predictive value is off of your own studies you do on yourself. That's what the log work and that's what the blood work is for. And that that's why people hire me is I have I teach them how to do proper um, accounting of their training, nutrition, daily metrics, and blood work so that we have data about what their body does under these stressors, what their body responds to. And none of one else really does that. They just, they cite off a bunch of stupid ass studies as if it's the facts. And then that people are supposed to just follow the directions of these studies as if it's positive predictive value with the sample sizes not only are too small to be statistically significant but the population tested isn't even the population that you're trying to correlate it to which is bodybuilders 
And then people always discredit the anecdotal evidence of bodybuilders because it's genetically elite. If you're not the genetically elite, why the fuck are you competing in a perfect body competition? That doesn't even make sense. It's like you're going to compete in the Mr. USA. We're going to compete against the other 150 million men in America for who has the best body. But you don't think you're genetically elite in order to get on that stage when you had to qualify by at least being a state champion? Take a state like Michigan. If you were the state champion of Michigan, you have the best body out of 5 million men. By definition, that makes you elite. That's better than some idiot once said, you're privileged because you're the top 5% of the fitness industry. I was like, bitch, you're terrible at math. It's not the top 5%. It's like the top 0.000001%. And it's not a fucking privilege. I've been lifting for 30 fucking years. And I've been watching what I eat for 38 years. Since I was 8 years. The shit you eat as an adult, I wouldn't have ate when I was 9. So that's discipline and that's intelligence. It ain't genetics. And discipline and intelligence is way more important than genetics when it comes to achieving anything in life, even bodybuilding. So I'm sorry that you people are failures, but genetics isn't the reason you're failures. You're failures because you just suck and you lack discipline. You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit.